Sorry, I always forget to unmute myself. Um, thank you so much. Um, thanks everyone for you know joining uh, this evening um, or wherever you're calling in from. I hope that I'm able to help you out a little bit and provide some information about Carnegie Mellon. Um, like she said, my name is Jamie Bowers. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Carnegie Mellon. Um, for this like about 20 minutes, I figured I would just show a really brief video and then just go over the academic or a very brief overview of Carnegie Mellon, who we are, um, a little bit about the academics, and then just a little bit about the admission and financial aid process and, and squeeze that all in within about 20 minutes. I'll also share in the chat, as long as it's okay, my email. So if students or parents or anyone has questions after the presentation, I am happy to be a resource for you for Carnegie Mellon, um, at least on the admission side of things. And even if I don't have the direct answer, I'm happy to connect you to the proper resource. So I'll just go ahead and get started and share my screen. This is just kind of a, I like to say a CMU hype video, um, just to you know show you a little bit more about campus. Um, so let's just go ahead. All right, hopefully you can see my screen. makers, the dreamers, the scientists, the artists, the researchers, the engineers, the challengers, the game changers, the fearless. Everything going to Today, we would. This debunkers, secures of cyberspace, and drivers of the driverless, the climate leaders, the energy shapers, and frontliners of artificial intelligence. Today, we work. The founders of new fields. The bosses of brain science. The smarts behind smart cities. The industry disruptors. Pioneers of planetary robotics architects of what's next. Today, we live it, breathe it, love it, write it, rewrite it, nail it, we hack, attack, move, screw, start up, start over, tinker, imagine, and dare. Today, we work. All right, so that's a video I like to share, just to kind of show you a little bit more about campus culture at Carnegie Mellon, just a little bit about our students. Um, but now what I'll do is, again, I'll do a very brief overview, go over our academics a little bit more, and then admission and financial aid. So if you need to know the, the top couple things about Carnegie Mellon, um, we are a university located right in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so on the western side of PA. Um, where we're located, we're about five to 10 minutes from downtown Pittsburgh. Um, so we live kind of right in that Oakland neighborhood where we're a very short bus ride um, or car ride right from the downtown area of Pittsburgh. Undergrad-wise, we're about 6,400 undergraduate students. So student body-wise, we're about a medium-sized institution. So I wouldn't say we're small, not really large, um, but right in that medium niche. Average class size is um, going to be about 25 students. Um, student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. Um, so I think that's you know, something worth highlighting if that's something that you're looking for in a university. You'll definitely get that individualized attention um, you know, by our faculty members. A lot of the times they'll know you by your first name, you'll know them um, kind of on a first name basis. So if that's something you're looking for, we've got it. Um, for varsity sports, we are part of the NCAA Division III for our varsity sports. We have 19 of them for both men and women. If that's something that you're interested in doing, being a student athlete, we definitely have that. Um, keep in mind, we are Division III though, so we do not offer athletic scholarship um, for our student athletes. And I'll go into a little bit more about financial aid once we go over the academics. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, just a very brief overview of, of CMU. We're a really big research institution for sure. That's a really big part of, you know, who Carnegie Mellon is. Um, but just kind of like a snapshot of Carnegie Mellon, that's a little bit of what we look like. Um, I know a lot of students, if they're interested in Carnegie Mellon, they're drawn to the academics that we offer. So I'll spend a little bit of time just, you know, going over the schools and colleges that we have to offer at Carnegie Mellon. If anything that I'm saying interests you or you'd like to find out more, our website is very robust, has almost too much information at times. Um, but please feel free to hop on our website, go on the individual schools websites, they have curriculums, um, internships, faculty profiles, and you'll get a lot more um, meat there. So um, if you're interested, feel free to hop on. We have six different colleges at the university on the undergraduate level that students can apply to. 
keep in mind when you're applying to Carnegie Mellon, you are applying to a specific school. Um, you're not applying to just Carnegie Mellon in general, but to a specific school and or program. So I'll briefly highlight the schools that we offer. First up is our College of Engineering. Um, if you're interested in engineering, this is actually our largest college on campus. So we have the most students within this program. I think we bring in about 400 first year students per year, and that's pretty large for our institution. We've got um, some different major departments. So we've um, got offered chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical and computer engineering, material science engineering, and mechanical engineering. So those are all the areas that we specialize in. We also offer two additional majors, um, biomedical engineering and engineering and public policy. So you're able to add those additional majors onto any of the ones that I just listed. Engineering program is super hands-on if you're interested in that. Top ranked in the country, usually you know top five or top 10, depending at what rankings you're looking at. Um, but if you're interested in engineering, definitely have it. It's there um, and it's a really you know, well-renowned program in the country. Switching gears a little bit, I'll talk um, just briefly about our College of Fine Arts. Yes, we do have a fine arts program. Sometimes students just as associate us with STEM programs, um, but we have a really well-known um, arts program. Within the College of Fine Arts, we've got the School of Architecture, School of Art, School of Design, School of Drama, and our School of Music. Thing that I'll highlight here is these are very performance or um, studio conservatory style base, meaning at least 80% of your time will be spent in these classes. So this is for students that want to live, breathe, sleep, drama, music, architecture, whatever it may be. Um, it's not necessarily for a student that wants to major in engineering, but also has an interest in theater. We have clubs, activities, classes for non-majors, if that more suits you. But if you are looking to do theater all day, every day, definitely recommend checking out our College of Fine Arts. The only other thing that I'll mention about our CFA program is there is an extra um, step when it comes to the admission process, either some type of pre-screen audition, portfolio process, any of the above. Um, you'll need to complete that for all of our programs. More information on the website there. Next up, we do offer a Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is our liberal arts version um, college on campus. We have over 60 different majors within this college. So if you're a little bit more undecided and you're not exactly sure you know, which college you may want to apply to, you may want to look at our Dietrich College. We have super qualitative programs like history, modern languages, English, um, but we also have pretty quantitative programs that live within this school as well. Um, social data science, economics, programs like that. Um, so once again, if you're a little bit more undecided, Dietrich, great place to start. Um, a lot of students also choose to minor in this school as well. Moving right along so we stay on time, we do offer our Mellon College of Science. Students, if you're really interested in pure sciences, this is a place for you. Um, the major departments here are biology, chemistry, math, and physics. Um, so if you love the pure sciences and you love research, definitely recommend checking out our Mellon College of Science. Fun fact for our MCS um, students is over 70% of students do some type of undergraduate research during their time as a Mellon College of Science student. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely recommend um, um, checking that out. Um, we do also offer our School of Computer Science. We have three major departments within our School of Computer Science. That's artificial intelligence, computer science, and then computational biology. So if you love math, then computer science is a great you know, program for you. I know sometimes students, faculty, staff will joke that it's kind of like math with a keyboard. Um, so that is something I think worth noting. Our computer science program is a little bit more math heavy than some other programs at some other institutions. Our school of computer science was actually um, born out of our math department originally. Um, we were the first school in the country to offer an undergraduate major in artificial intelligence. So if that's something that excite, excites you, um, we're definitely a pioneer in that area. And um, typically our School of Computer Science is ranked within the top four in the country. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely recommend checking out our SCS. And last but certainly not least, our Tepper School of Business. If you are interested in business, we keep it really simple in this college. You can actually only major in really one thing, um, and that's business administration. Um, so we really only offer one undergrad degree within our Tepper School. However, with that being said, we have many different minors and concentrations that you can fine tune that degree to exactly what you're you know, looking to do. Some of those include you know, accounting, business analytics, entrepreneurship, we have a whole list. Um, very quantitative program again, Carnegie Mellon loves math and science. Um, so our business program was really born out of just a, an all graduate program. So I think a highlight here is our undergraduate students are really being taught by 
all graduate faculty. So I, I think that's a really great highlight there um, and lots of opportunities um, for students. Again, that was a very brief overview of all the programs that we have to offer at Carnegie Mellon, but I wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet and just let you know those are, you know, all the programs that we have to offer academically. Any of that interests you, feel free to hop on our website. And again, once I'm done presenting, I will include my contact information. Really briefly, I'll just go into um, admission and financial aid applying to the institution. Just some quick facts that might be helpful for you to know. We are an exclusive common application school, so you do need to fill out the common app to apply to Carnegie Mellon. Um, that typically opens up right around August 15th. So for students that are, you know, maybe rising seniors interested in the fall 2021 year, um, that's kind of when that will all open. We have a big change this year. I'm not sure, you know, if students have been following. Um, a lot of schools are coming out with some different announcements. Carnegie Mellon for the first time really ever is going test optional for the 2021 year. So the SAT or ACT are no longer required um, and it's totally fine if you do not submit those. If you took the SAT and ACT, you are more than welcome to submit that. But even if you took it and you do not wish to submit that to us, that's perfectly fine. Um, we will be reviewing all students equally if they you know, do submit SATs or ACTs or if they do not. Um, and this really just came from the impact of COVID-19 and so many students were not able to register for an SAT or ACT test. Um, so, so that is a big change and there is more information on our website there. Another big change while I'm talking about that is we are actually no longer considering SAT subject tests. Um, that is something that we did actually review in all of the previous years, um, but even really before the impact of COVID-19, this was a decision that was made by university leadership and we will no longer be taking those into account. So what will we be taking into account? Um, we'll be really taking a look at the whole picture, whole context of the application. Um, definitely gonna take a look at your high school transcript, how you individually challenged yourself at your high school. Um, we're really gonna be focusing on those non-academics. What extracurricular activities were you involved in? We do require two letters of recommendation, one from a teacher and one from a counselor. Definitely going to be reading that Common App essay. And then Carnegie Mellon also requires three additional short answer questions in addition to the Common App essay. Um, spend some time on those. They're only about 300 words each for the response, but we do truly read every single one. I, I can vouch for that. Um, and it really does help us get to know the student a little bit more. Um, so those are the things that we're really going to be taking into consideration. We have two main ways that you can apply to the university, early decision and regular decision. We do not offer early action at Carnegie Mellon. So those are the two main ways that you can apply. And then looks like I've got about one more minute. I'll just briefly touch on financial aid. Um, financial aid at Carnegie Mellon may look different than, you know, financial aid at some other institutions that you might be looking at. We are a fully need-based institution when it comes to financial aid. So we do not actually offer any merit-based scholarships. Um, so any financial aid that you do qualify for will come from the FAFSA form that you submit to us. And we also do require the CSS profile. Um, so those two documents will provide us with the information that we need and your estimated family contribution. And then we will then provide you a financial aid offer based off of those documents. Um, so again, just a fully need-based institution for financial aid, just to make it as equitable as possible for all students and to make it as affordable as possible um, for all students applying to Carnegie Mellon. And we've got a soft deadline for financial aid right around February 15th, but that's not till forever. So you do not need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like my really brief rundown overview academics, admission, financial aid. Um, I'll kind of leave it at that. Are there any questions that I can answer for anyone or I'm not sure I can check the chat as well. We did have a few questions. Sure. Yeah. Someone asked whether uh, Carnegie Mellon considers or I guess weights demonstrated interest during the admissions process. Maybe you can like explain a little bit about what that is and how you consider it. Yeah, that is a great question. And so the answer is no, we do not track demonstrated interest at all at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and some schools will. So it's, it's worth looking into. And I think that's a great question to ask. Um, demonstrated interest is basically like certain schools may track if you maybe attend an event or register for a virtual counseling session or take a virtual or, you know, on campus tour. Um, they'll track that and that can potentially um, sometimes in a way help you know your overall admission decision. 
We do not track that whatsoever. Um, the only thing that we will be taking a look at is your application. So I always tell students anything that you want us to know includes somewhere on the application. So whether that's in the Common App essay, the short answer questions, or feel free to utilize the additional information section of the Common App essay. We look at every single one. Um, so we do not track demonstrated interest. And the only other thing that I'll add there is we do not offer admission interviews as well. Thanks. And then Dr. Gao also asked um, about the test optional policy. Mm -hmm. Is it is it sort of an all or nothing thing? Like if you choose to submit test scores, do you have to choose, do you have to submit all test scores or can you submit just your highest test scores? That's a good question. And that is correct. In the past, we would ask for students to submit all test scores to us to see any trends. We would still basically take a look at the highest score. Um, but in previous years, we did, you know, ask for students to submit all of them. Moving forward, no. Really, whatever you're comfortable and would like to share with us, since we are, you know, fully test optional this year, you can feel free to submit any or all or none scores with us. So no, no preference there. If you want to share all of them with us, perfectly fine. If you just want to submit the highest score, that's fine too. Um, we do super score for the SAT, but we do not for the ACT. Great. Um, and then Zoe asks a great question. She wonders if you can double major with arts and another academic subject. So if those are in two separate schools, can you cross between them? That's a great question. And I'm glad you actually brought that up because I failed to mention one thing is we do what, um, offer what's called a BXA program. Um, BXA is pretty unique to Carnegie Mellon. Um, it basically stands for a Bachelor of X and the Arts. Um, so it's a really cool program where you can combine any other program within, you know, Mellon College of Science, Tepper School of Business, and the Arts. This is our BXA program is pretty different than double majoring. It's basically the intersection of two areas. Um, so for example, you know, we had a student study um, biology and then art. They wanted to illustrate medical journals and textbooks and things like that. So it wasn't necessarily studying biology separately and art separately, um, but how the two kind of intersect. When it comes to double majoring, just in general, if you're not interested in the BXA program, it is possible. It's pretty rare for our CFA majors. They're pretty busy, I'll be honest. So um, they're spending a lot of time, you know, kind of honing in on their craft. Um, so it's something you can work with your academic advisor on, but minoring is a lot more common. Cool. Um, there were actually a whole bunch more questions in the chat, so I promise you we'll get to everyone's questions and we also will have a verbal Q&A at the end, so if we failed to read your question out loud, please feel free to unmute yourself when we get to that point and ask it again. Um, so I see all of these. I'm just going to pause on the questions for a second so that we have time for CC and Danielle to also share a little bit about being a student at CMU and what Jewish student life is like at Carnegie Mellon, um, and then we'll come back to all these questions. So I'm gonna pass it off to Cece and Danielle. Um, I'll talk really quickly about, um, about the Hillel, and then I'll let Cece talk about her role as the president of CMU Hillel and her student experience. So I, I drove into our Hillel building. I'm sitting at the corner of um, Forbes and Craig Street in the Oakland neighborhood of Pittsburgh. We have a three-story Hillel building. Um, I hope I tried to set the stage behind me. You can see we have a cafe area, we have lounge areas, um, and we have this gorgeous building that we use for any number of things throughout the year. We are a multi campus Hillel, although the campuses that we serve most directly are Pitt and CMU. Um, we estimate that there's somewhere around 400 Jewish undergraduate students at Carnegie Mellon, and we have a particular relational engagement model where it's our goal to know every Jewish student on campus. And I have to say that thanks to our phenomenal student leadership, we really do know every Jewish student on campus. So as Jamie was going through and listing the different majors and the different schools, I was like having a little um, photo, photo flip in my head of all the different students that I know in all the different colleges and all the different programs. Um, and everything she said is true. Like the fine arts students, we have to go find them and like give them challah and kosher for Passover food. Like they don't have time to even leave the building. Um, so we go, we go find them. Um, but that really basically gives you an idea about the way our Hillel functions on campus. We're there to meet students' needs and to help them have the Jewish lives and Jewish meaning that they want. So we have a very peer leadership focused model. Um, we have a large Hillel in terms of staff because we are multi-campus, so there's tons of resources, tons of options. Um, 
Unlike many Hillels, we have no rabbis on our staff. Um, I'm trained as a historian and a medievalist, so I have um, a particular amount of nerd credibility that gets me very far with the students at CMU. I'm not a scientist, but I can tell them about you know medieval science stuff, so it works. Um, but we are very blessed that we have the Jewish community of Squirrel Hill, which you may have known about before um, the terrible tragedy that happened here in 2018 but i feel like since the massacre that happened at the tree of life synagogue the whole world knows how amazing squirrel hill is we have every kind of synagogue um we have every kind of rabbi i have them all on speed dial many of the professors faculty staff at cmu and the other universities are jewish and we really have a whole sort of jewish community that's there to support our hillel and to support our jewish students for absolutely whatever we need um so that's that's a very quick introduction um i guess some other things to mention um in, in the changing scenario in which we find ourselves it's hard to know how all of this will unfold but Previously, we did offer Shabbat dinners in our building or on campus every single week. Um, we had multiple trips to Israel throughout the year, including opportunities for birthright through our Hillel in December and in May. We had an, uh, an internship program in Tel Aviv called Onward Israel, where students could go and spend the summer um, working in their field in, in Israel, subsidized by our local Jewish Federation. So it was a very accessible program. We now have a grant to do interfaith travel to Israel, and our Federation has also sponsored ambassadors trips for students who are interested um, in higher level kind of political discussions around Israel and the, the situation in the Middle East. So, there's always been a lot of opportunity for travel um, and Israel related programming, but that's not, that's not all we do. That's simply part of our portfolio. Um, so I will take some more questions too at the end if people have specific questions, but I'm gonna pass it over to Cece, who is the president of our CMU Hillel Student Board. Hi everyone. Um, like Daniel said, I'm Cece, um, and I actually just finished my junior year. I'm gonna be a senior um, at Carnegie Mellon in the fall. Um, I'm majoring in computer science and minoring in linguistics. Um, so first I just want to say um, maybe to give you an idea about CMU. Um, my favorite thing about CMU is how passionate um, all of the people at CMU are. Um, and that's not just about um, their academics and like their major, it's about everything. <laughs> um, there's, I've had so many conversations with people at CMU where we just go off on some tangent about something that they love. And that, those are my favorite conversations with people at CMU. Um, there's just, everyone has a passion for something and it's really incredible to see. Um, one of the ways that we see that a lot is with our spring carnival, um, which we can talk about, which is basically just um, one of our big events at the spring carnival is booth, which is where students have uh, a week to build basically like a house or like a two story house. Um, and like students get really into it and all the professors know like their students who are doing booth and things like that. And that's just one example of like the passion that you see at Carnegie Mellon is that people are so into everything that they do. And that's my favorite thing about going to CMU. To talk a little bit about Hillel, um, I'm the president of CMU's Hillel board. Um, when I came to CMU, I didn't really have any idea of what my Jewish life was going to be like on campus. Um, I grew up in an area that wasn't very Jewish. I didn't know many Jewish people um, and my family wasn't very religious. I started going to events at Hillel because one of the graduated board members quickly became one of my best friends. Um, the people at Hillel are just so excited to meet you and to bring you into the community in any way that they can. Um, and the people are just so welcoming. Um, one of the things I love is that I never felt out of place because I don't have a religious background. Hillel is a great place whether you're not religious at all or you're orthodox. Um, Hillel is open to it all and um, it was really great for me to get in touch with just any part of my culture. Um, so you might be wondering what sort of stuff we do at Hillel um, or as Jew Jewish students at CMU. Um, we do a wide variety of things from holiday and Shabbat events to social events to bring together our Jewish community. Um, every Friday night we usually have Shabbat dinner either in the Hillel building or once a month we have on campus Shabbat dinner. Um, those are some of my favorite days of the year. 
because around 50 to 60 CMU Jewish students usually come together to eat awesome catered kosher dinners and um, engage in a Jewish activity. In January, we had a Roaring Twenties Shabbat dinner um, to celebrate the beginning of the new decade. Um, before dinner, we played a round of Jewish Jeopardy, or as we called it, Jeopardy, um, where the questions were all themed about the four Jewish New Years. Um, so that's just like one example of the sort of silly on-campus Shabbat fun that we have. Um, like another example was we had a leap into space Shabbat and there was a poster that I had nothing to do with that had my face on an astronaut's body. Um, there was lots of, we have just an incredible amount of fun um, in everything that we do. Um, another part of Hillel I was very involved in in the past year was the creation of Achayot, our Jewish women's community at CMU. Um, we wanted to have a space for Jewish women to gather together and it came out of um, an event that we had previously been doing called Women's Havdalah, which is where we would meet on Saturday nights to um, do the Havdalah prayer and then um, just any fun activity. Um, this sort of continued into our version of Achayot. Um, one of the things that we did this past semester was we all went to see Little Women together. Um, and afterward, we went to Waffleonia, which is this dessert place um, in Squirrel Hill, where they have amazing, amazing waffles. And we just sat there and discussed <laughs> what we thought about Little Women and like who we were as the characters and things like that. Um, so these are just like two examples of so many things that we do. Um, and I just, I guess I'll just finish by saying that I couldn't really imagine what my CMU career or life would be like if I hadn't got, started going to Hillel events. Um, it's just such a big part of who I am. And um, I've just had an amazing time and Hillel has always been there for me as my family at CMU. So um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's basically what I'll say is I would definitely recommend coming and experiencing Jewish life at Carnegie Mellon. It's amazing. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a good amount of time to jump back into some questions and I'll start with the ones that were in the chat, but um, feel free also to unmute yourselves, ask questions of uh, what Jewish life is like, what student life is like in general, more academic stuff. It's all up for grabs. So we had a question about fi the financial aid package and whether there's a difference in the package between early decision and regular decision admissions? That's a really good question. So the package itself will not be different or the offer won't be different. Um, we'll be looking at the same exact things that we would early decision versus regular de decision. It is worth noting though, if you are admitted through ED, that is a binding decision. Um, so you are expected to deposit within 72 hours of your acceptance um, if you do apply that way. So if financial aid is something that is playing a bigger factor in your decision of attending college and you would like to be able to compare financial aid offers from other institutions, I would highly recommend applying regular decision. Majority of our students apply regular decision. We admit the most students through regular decision and CMU is kind of in a weird spot that um, your chances of getting into the institution are just the same whether you apply ED versus RD, um, which is not very common with other schools. Um, so I really like to let students know that ED is just really for a student, the biggest advantage is you will find out a lot sooner if you're admitted or not. Um, but your chances of getting into the institution are the exact same. So long answer to that simple question is no, they will not be different, but it is a binding decision for early decision. That's actually a good segue because Jane asked what percentage of students are admitted ED versus regular decision? Ooh, that's a good question. I'll be honest, I don't know the exact percentage off the top of my head, but if I had to give you a ballpark, and I know this is being recorded, so you can probably look up the exact ones after, I would probably say about 80% of, 70 to 80% of our class is admitted through regular decision. So then about 20 to 30% is admitted through early decision. So definitely the majority, uh, more than the majority is admitted uh, through regular decision. Great. Uh, someone wanted to know about the drama auditions and whether or not those are going to be virtual this year or is it really too soon to tell? That is a really great question and I can tell you one that we have been getting 
Unfortunately, I do not have a definite answer to that yet. So as of right now, the College of Fine Arts has not come out with a formal statement of how they're handling the pre-screen audition process. There will be some type of information that will be shared. It's just a little too early. Um, so just stay tuned. We will be communicating this whenever we do have information via email. And then we'll also do um, a website banner update as well. So just keep an eye out. Um, there'll most likely be some type of update though. Cool. The next question I think is a great one. And it makes me think of a bit of a broader question too that maybe everyone can weigh in on. The specific question was, what, if a student discloses uh, a learning difference such as dyslexia during the, their, the application process, could it negatively impact their admissions opportunity? But I think that might also be a chance to explore diversity on campus in general, you know, learning differences, mental health resources, um, LB, LGBTQ plus diversity, cultural diversity, things like denominational diversity, maybe Hillel. Um, so maybe we can spend a little bit of time talking about that, but we'll talk about the learning differences first. Sure, yeah, and I don't want to take up too much. I'll, you know, answer this direct question, and then if CC or anyone else wants to, you know, share any other things that, that they'd like to share. Um, so, so definitely not, no. Um, we would never, that would never negatively affect a student's chances of getting into the institution um, by any means. Anything that you wish for the, you know, Office of Admission to know, feel free to include on your application. But I always tell students, you know, if you're not comfortable sharing something, you know, don't feel like you need to, you know, share that with us. But for that specific question, you know, you know, definitely not. Please feel free to share any information you wish us to know, and that would not negatively impact your, your admission decision. I can say something about Jewish diversity. Um, Jewish students at Carnegie Mellon are incredibly diverse. They do not fit any one mold and the Hillel um, because of that or in tandem with that also doesn't really have one particular mold because we, because we function on a peer leadership model we're constantly responding to what students need so whether we have different kinds of denominational prayer services or religious experiences holiday experiences largely depends on student need for the year so there are others talia outgold who's another cmu student so there have been some years when we've had a full shabbat day orthodox minion and program and um, we've done it every other shabbat there have been some semesters where we do it once a semester um, there are many times when I provide meals, you know, catered meals um, with a plata or a blech for students to heat it up um, on campus um, to have different kinds of Shabbat and holiday experiences that are totally peer led and supported by Hillel, but student, student designed and student led. Um, in the years that I've been working with the CMU campus, so when I first moved to Pittsburgh, um, nine years ago my cousin was an undergraduate at CMU and even after I started working at Hillel he never came to Hillel and that was fine um, because part of what our Hillel does is tries to be on campus to support students so um, I've seen things like CAPS the counseling service at, at CMU and other um, sort of um, initiatives and departments within student life at CMU be very supportive of student wellness and um, also very responsive to student leadership in terms of um, during the time that I've been at this Hillel, something um, uh, called the Mindfulness Room was a student project that was developed at CMU that was a room that was meant to be tech free and not programmed, just a space where people could go and be and rest, um, which I think um, is very transformative and um, that was something that emerged during the time that I've been working with CMU students is really cool as an example. I can also comment a little bit on the, it was mentioned like LGBTQ um, stuff, especially I'll say with Hillel, um, the staff makes it very clear that LGBTQ students are welcome at our Hillel. That's very important to us. Um, and especially like Danielle is so welcoming. We've had, um, stickers where people can write their name and their pronouns um, uh, at Shabbat dinners and things like that. Um, I would say that's very important and that's very important to me um, that people feel welcome. And so I, I would definitely say that uh, we have a welcoming community for that. And I know lots of uh, queer students uh, at CMU and in our Jewish community. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. Back to the academic side of things. Uh, Neil and also Hayden asked about the 
uh, how often graduate students are teaching undergrads? Like what is the um, either percentage or to what degree and, and maybe more about like what the faculty to student ratio might be or average class size, I guess could be helpful. Um, I can mention, I've never had a graduate um, student teach my class. I've never had, a, I always have professors lecturing um, and we also have supplemental levels of instruction that are done by graduate students or undergraduate TAs. Um, so that would be like recitations. We have smaller group meetings when we have a large lecture. We'll have uh, much smaller iterations of the class where we go over material that was already taught in lecture. So usually it's, um, it's to just solidify those things in our mind with a smaller group. Um, and so I've never had anything taught by graduate students. And that was actually pretty important to me in choosing CMU. I was, I wanted to have professors actually lecturing. Um, one thing I'll say also is even when there is a big class, uh, there are lots of office hours, both run by TAs and by professors. Um, so I've gone to both of those um, where you go to the TAs and they'll help you with something. But also if you feel more comfortable going to the professor, they're required to have office hours. So that that's always really helpful. And I've always had really welcoming environments um, with my professor's office hours. So yeah. Whoa. That's a great answer. Um, uh, I can jump in also if that's okay. Hi everyone, sorry I'm late. I'm Talia, I'm a rising junior and I'm studying um, engineering. Um, I've had a grad student teach a class, but it was a first year writing class that you will all be required to take if you end up at CMU called interp um, or interpretation and argument. But like Cece said, that's the only time a graduate student has taught a class for me, um, but you work really closely with grad students, especially if you have labs. Um, and in terms of class size, I think it really depends on your major. But as you specify and get further down your track, your class sizes shrink and shrink and shrink. Um, and there's always like very individualized attention, even in huge lectures. Like I had a physics recitation in like a 200 person lecture, but the TA knew all of our names. The professor hosted office hours like four days a week. Um, so they definitely make themselves available and it's still like you can get to know your professors even if you're in a couple hundred person lecture. Um, there's no anonymity, there's no like people don't fall into the cracks if that makes sense. Yeah, totally want to second that thing about your professors knowing who you are. Um, I had two different 80 person lectures where the I kid you not, the professors knew every person's name. Like two years later, the professor will still see me in the hallway and be like, hi, CC, um, things like that. And also in like a 200 person lecture, which was only for like my beginning classes, when I went to the professor's office hours, like he knows my name and he knows who I am. Um, and we still say hi to each other to, the, to this day, even though I was in a class with him in my freshman year. So it's totally, um, you can totally get personalized attention from your professors. It's a great feeling. I'm glad that they take care of you guys in that way. That's so cool. Um, and then finally, we had one more question in the chat and then, you know, happy to open it up or to hear more from Talia who just joined us. Um, but the question was asked, um, sorry, I skipped one. There are two more questions, sorry. Uh, so this is about, again, about t uh, the going test optional for this year. Um, and Dr. Gao asks, what, what, will the, what will be the main factors to be evaluated for the coming admission cycle if it's not, you know, boards? Um, and so what's your advice for rising seniors as they prepare for their college applications? I think that's a really great question. And this batch of applications are going to look different, you know, than applications in the past for sure. Um, I do think when it comes to the academic side of things, since we will not really be relying on SATs or ACTs, you know, we're really going to take a look at the curriculum that the student, you know, took advantage of. Um, I, I will say we will never compare, you know, a student high school to high school. We really just look at that student and how they challenge themselves in their individual high school's curriculum because um, student A's curriculum high school that they offer is going to look very different than student B. Um, so that was even before, you know, the impact of COVID-19 and everything going on. Um, so we definitely will be taking a look at that. 
And I do think this you know, year, we are gonna have to focus a little bit more on those non-academics. They were always reviewed as part of the holistic admission process, but um, yeah, really just focusing on you know, the transcript curriculum rigor, and then the non-academics between the extracurricular activities, the writing responses, and then as well as the letters of recommendation. If I had any advice for an incoming student, I'm not sure even with, you know, the current climate, if I would necessarily change my answer, um, really just be yourself. It's definitely easy to tell a pretty authentic application where a student is just showing exactly who they are in your application. Um, I always tell students, write us, don't show us. We're not able to click on links or anything like that included on the application. So anything that you would like us to know, um, please feel free to write that or include that somewhere on the application. Um, and the only other thing that I'll mention is, I understand that the impact of COVID-19 has obviously hit every student differently and, and, and some have felt that impact more than others. But, you know, please know every application that we'll be looking at, every student has been impacted by this. So, so don't feel like you're alone. We'll be taking, you know, look into context of the application for sure. We know that your transcripts might be looking a little bit different with maybe some pass-fail grades, um, some online classes, but just know you're not alone. And that really will be, you know, how every student is applying this year. So, so I hope that's helpful. Um, and those are kind of, I think, the things that we'll be focusing on. Very comforting to hear because I'm sure it's quite stress for some of our students. Um, and then finally, the last question we have in the chat is about specifically about the College of Fine Arts and how admissions decisions are made between sort of the non-artistic um, part of the application, you know, happening in the admissions office and the, the portfolio submission that will happen with the college itself. That's a good question. So I don't foresee this really changing um, this year, and I can actually give you some pretty definitive answers on this. So when it comes to the School of Architecture, Art, and Design, it's about 50-50. So we're looking at about 50% of that artistic portion and about 50% of that academic portion, so about half and half. Um, in our office, we do not review the portfolios that you submit for architecture, art, and design, but the faculty members in those specific offices. Um, so it's pretty even there when it comes to, you know, admitting a student into the university, um, pretty equal balance between that artistic and that academic side. When it comes to drama and music, that is a little bit different. So about 80% of your decision is coming from that audition, whatever that may look like this year, pre-screen process. And about 20% of that decision will be academics. Again, we don't see any of those auditions or videos submitted. Um, that is all handled by the College of Fine Arts faculty members and we work hand in hand with them to make sure that the student will not only be academically successful but artistically successful as well. Cool. Um, okay, we, I'm happy to open it up. We still have about 10 minutes left. So if people want to verbalize a question, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, if you want to know more about what it's like to be a student, we are lucky to have two students on our call now, which is awesome. So feel free to ask away. Hi, um, this is Dr. Lingao. Thank you so much. It's very, very helpful. Uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, I have one more question uh, because this is really the new essay in the common app is a COVID-19 essay. Mm -hmm. And uh, some um, colleges say um, this is truly optional. Some colleges say they really expect um, the student to uh, show how they spend the time. So what's the expectation from Carnegie Mellon? That's a good question. And I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So I don't want to say the wrong thing now. I know that we are actually still submitting our Common App edits to the Common App as we speak. Um, so I would just say stay tuned. Um, if Common App is asking for that essay to be optional, I really can't foresee Carnegie Mellon asking it for it to be a requirement. Um, so yeah, I would just say stay tuned on that. Um, we're still kind of working with the Common App finalizing ours since we did have so many changes this year. Um, but if it's, if it's optional to the Common App, I assume it's also going to be optional for our office as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll also include my email now for everyone in the chat. Um, again, there's my first and last name in my email, so feel free to Email me later if you think of anything else. 
We'll also follow up at the end of the road trip. We will follow up with everyone, every um, uh, participant, and we'll give all the, the contact information for every school. So you should definitely be able to follow up with anyone if you have questions. Okay, well, I wanna thank everyone for coming once again, and a huge thank you to our presenters for making yourselves available this evening to talk about your experience and the uh, experience of being a Carnegie Mellon student, um, a, what it's like to participate in Jewish life on campus and how it works to actually get into the school. So um, wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thank you all so, so much. I will just say, cause I can do this cause I sit in a really objective, spot because I graduated from college in 2005. Um, but uh, just a reminder that this is a busy and overwhelming time in, in your high school career and it often feels like such a weighty decision and it is. It's one of the first like real important decisions that you make independently and in terms of your own future and your own happiness and I just want to remind you that um, whether it's Carnegie Mellon or any other campus across our country. Um, college is really what you make of it and the experience is how you carve out um, time for yourself and your own to pursue your, the opportunities that you're passionate about and you will be happy um, wherever you end up um, and even if you if it's your first second third fourth or fifth choice um, you, it, it will be a wonderful and enriching experience and we're just so grateful that you jumped onto the bus um, and joined us for the road trip and we wish all of you tons of luck and uh, stay well and stay healthy and stay safe as we hopefully move back to some sense of normalcy and maybe soon you will be able to actually get onto campus and check these places out with your own eyes. Um, and then we can feed you. And you can be fed, that's right. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you everyone so much. We'll start be sending you links and all sorts of follow-up information. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.